Hey y'all, welcome back to day seven. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get here, but I went on vacation and I accidentally forgot to tell you guys about it, but I am back. Um, last vacation of the summer, super sad, but that's okay because fall's coming and I also love fall. All right, today we are going to tackle this jackknife sofa. Um, so this is a custom build right here. I got this couch from Target before I stopped shopping there. Um, I really do love this couch. I think it was like $300 or something like that. Super reasonable for a couch. And I like this one because I actually have some fabric that I buy from Joann's um, that matches the vinyl on this perfectly. And so I can make it kind of look like it's all one couch and that's how it's supposed to be. So before I start to build any of this couch, I need to assemble it and get the exact dimensions because sometimes what the manufacturer says the dimensions are, are not true all the time. And I want an actual dimension, not an estimated dimension. Um, so this is just me putting all these bolts together in here. Um, I did end up getting my drill and doing it this way instead of using this little ridiculous Allen wrench. I don't know why I have all these tools and it's the last thing that I use and I'm I literally sat here for probably 10 minutes doing it like this before I was like, this is, this, this is ridiculous. Why am I doing this? I have perfectly good tools that I could use to do this. It was also 109 degrees outside that day. So you can only imagine how hot it is inside this camper. So when you see me change clothes, it's because I only worked on this camper a little bit today. And it was just, it was way too hot when I started doing this, especially with no air conditioning in there. All right, so I assembled it and then I measured it and now it's time for me to take it back off. Um, now that I know the exact dimensions and roughly what dimensions it is when it lays flat, that's really what I needed to know and that wasn't included in the description of this couch. So I needed to know basically how long it is with the back folded down into a bed. Um, so now I'm basically just measuring and getting the center of this slide because I obviously want the couch to be in the middle of the slide. And then I'm going to build two little side tables on that extra little gap that's there um, and maybe do a little something fancy fancy with it. So now that I have the dimensions of what I want to build, my first step is to make the bottom frame. Um, so ideally, um, what I'm going to do is make a frame that spans the length of the couch that's going to go below it. So the couch is going to sit a little bit forward of the slide. Um, and basically it's just going to have a little like ledge hanging down there that I'm going to be able to pull in and out. And it's just going to make way more sense once you start seeing me put it together. Um, so that was just me ripping down some two by fours. I needed it to come out about three inches more, which is why I'm using two by fours. Um, the last one that I did, I actually um, built the platform specific to the couch instead of having to deal with whatever measurement the slide was to begin with. Um, and so that's just why it was three and a half. The last one you can, I think I use like inch and a half by inch and a half. Um, so really it's, it's all about how you want to build it and what you want it to look like. Um, this is going to be a little more heavy duty just because of the width that I need this to be. So as you can see, the shape is taking form um, and it's not big at all. This spot in the middle right here, I am making those handles that I'm gonna be able to pull out. I didn't frame it out like this last time and I kind of regretted not having something like heavy duty to pull on when you pull the whole couch out because the couch is like 100 pounds. So you, I mean, it takes a little bit to kind of so you live and you learn and you build things better the next time. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. So here I'm basically centering these uh, little handles right here. And I know it looks kind of funny, but you can, the one on the left and the one on the right, those are the holes that I'm trying to make where you can stick your hands in them and pull them out. Um, so basically now that I have everything centered and marked, it's just a matter of putting it all together. Um, I drilled some pilot holes and then I used some three inch screws to just kind of screw this in. Um, as you see, my son is right there like messing with scrap wood and hammers and it's literally just what he does all the time is just play with all of the scrap wood that I have. And of course my battery died, so gotta change that out. Um, also, somebody explained this to me. I do not like this drill. So I bought this drill on like Black Friday and I don't know if they're just like a different type of drill that DeWalt sells because it's supposed to be cheaper, but it literally like anytime I put any type of force on it or I try to drill in a screw too fast, it'll like jam up on me and it'll spin like it's not catching the gears on the inside. So. 
If y'all have that problem too, let me know because it's kind of frustrating. All right, anyway, back to the couch. So now that I have that put together, these are the two side pieces that I'm going to use to attach to the top piece and the bottom piece. Um, so I'm just tacking this in, that way I have something to hold on to. And as you see, it didn't, um, like I didn't make that piece right there where the handle's gonna be uh, out of like three inch wood because that is, would have just been ridiculous. So that's why I'm adding the side pieces on to match the width that's already there and just give me a little extra something something to grab onto. Okay, now time for the actual assembly. So right here, I'm just marking the center of this wood. That way I can actually put my handles in the center um, because I don't want them uh, like lopsided. You can obviously put it wherever you want to put it, but it's easier to put it in the middle for, I guess, like weight distribution and just it's, it's easier. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't put it in the middle, but you can if you don't want to. So anyway, I'm going to attach my side pieces after that. And then hopefully if I measured right, the bottom piece will just line up directly with the center marks and it actually did. So I was surprised. Um, and this piece of wood was actually like kind of warped a little bit and bent and it's going to come to bite me in the butt later. And I didn't realize it until now, but we'll get to that then. Um, but for now, that is pretty much it. That's done. I'm just making sure it's all square and everything's all together. Um, I guess the most important thing for this is you design it how you want it, but make sure it's square. So now that it is, I can go ahead and start building the rest of the couch. So this is a lot of two by fours that I cut to the same width or length as the actual um, frame right there. So it ended up being 77 inches for one, two, three, four pieces of wood right there. So what I'm doing is I'm making a giant square that will be screwed directly into the slide. Um, and then there's that piece of wood in the middle right there that is not screwed into the slide. That's gonna be the slider part. Um, but the reason I make this giant rectangle, not a square, sorry guys, don't come at me, it's a rectangle, um, is because I wanna make basically a giant cage for this piece of wood. I don't want it to be able to slide left. I don't want it to be able to slide right. I want it to be able to slide forward and back and that is it. Because if it's off a little bit, it won't slide very well. Um, it'll try to like go cattywampus when you slide it in and out and it just, it doesn't work and it doesn't slide like it should. Um, so anyway, I'm just screwing this directly in and I'm kind of sliding that piece of wood in and out as I go, um, just to make sure that it's a good fit. It's a tight fit and that it'll be able to slide easily because that's what we want. Um, and I will end up, you know, doing a few more things just to make sure that this slides well, but this is just the general gist. Um, and then we can move on to the fun part, which is the slats. So the first question is how long do we need to make the slats? And I basically just got this by measuring how long this entire thing is and seeing how far this bottom piece needs to come out from the couch. Um, and it was 22 inches is what, how far this needed to slide out. Um, so I pushed it back in. I kind of moved that piece of wood up to 22 inches. And then I measured from the top all the way down to the slide, which I think ended up being like, I, I can't even remember. It was basically the entire length of the slide. It was 40 something. Um, no, it was 28. It was 28 and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces that are 22 inches to attach directly to my slidey piece and the front part, um, that will slide out. And then I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces that are 28 and seven eighths. And those are going to be my fixed pieces that will, um, basically attach to the top and the back frame part, that, that rectangle part that I made. Um, and this will also make sense once I start putting it in, but I do need a lot of pieces of this. Um, and this is just pine boards that I bought from Builders Discount Center. Um, they're super cheap. They're, you know, it's, it's nothing fancy. And I bought it there um, because it was way cheaper than buying it at Lowe's or Home Depot. So if you have a Builders Discount Center near you, definitely um, shop from them for some things because it'll be a lot cheaper in the long run. All right, so as you can see, I'm basically just alternating these pieces right here. Um, and these are gonna form the slats. And so the 22 inch piece is the one that's gonna slide out that attaches directly to that frame on the floor. And then the longer piece spans the entire length of the slide. Um, and that will be a stationary piece that will not move. And it basically just acts like a guide for the other ones to slide in and out. Um, now this first piece is very important that you get it square because if you don't, all of your other ones are not gonna be square and it's not gonna slide in and out. So definitely make sure that this one is 100% square 
Um, check it like four times. And then what I did was I got just a scrap piece of eighth inch paneling and I stuck it between each slat. That way I know that the distance is going to be the exact same for each slat going all the way down. Now I didn't pick this just because of the thickness. You can use whatever you want. Um, I've just found that that thickness works really well. Um, it's not too much of a gap. It's not too small of a gap just in case you get one on one you know, square off, um, it's, it's not going to ruin the whole thing. So as long as that first piece is square and it is almost, I actually, um, the pieces on the left and on the right will always be stationary and then it will move into the sliding piece after that, not the other way around. So that's very important that I found out. Okay. So now that these are going in nice and smoothly, I'm moving on to the other side, same thing. Um, and I'll work my way to the middle because I know that this isn't going to be like perfectly like, you know, perfect in the middle because I did it measure it that way. And it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. Um, so I'm just working my way in and then I end up making two pieces right here that are sliding. Um, and it spaced out pretty evenly. There's like maybe a 16th of an inch gap on the other side, but I feel like that's pretty close. So I'm going to go with it. So after that, I tested sliding this thing in and out a bunch of times and um, it slid in relatively well. I still have some work to do, um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put the extra screw in. So I only put one screw in on each one just in case I misaligned something or it wasn't perfectly square. That way, if I needed to go back, I didn't have to take four screws off. I only would have to take two, uh, but it was pretty good. So I've screwed the other two screws in. So there's four screws on each board. And as you can see, I'm kind of messing with it and it gets almost stuck at one point. Um, it slides out fine, but it's still not as smooth as I would like it to be. And I think part of that is because that front frame is made of um, two by fours and not like, like half inch or not half inch, inch and a half like I made last time. Um, so I'm just adjusting the side rails right here to make it either tighter or looser. So if it wobbles too much side to side, you want to move that board in. And if it's too tight, obviously you want to move the board out a little bit. And I kind of like how that um, slides in and out now. It, it does pretty good. Um, and so <laughs> the last kind of step to this part, I forgot to do this earlier, but I put some wax on this. Um, it just kind of helps these two pieces slide better. So I put it on this outer piece that really slides on that pine. And then I put it on the inside piece of that two by four that slides along, um, the rectangle frame that I made before. Um, and then after that, it slides out pretty good. So, um, not too much work for it to come in and out. Um, and now I'm ready to put the couch on and see how it looks. So this is mostly just me seeing if I measured everything correctly. Um, so I'm putting it in and then I will pull the couch out to see if there's enough clearance for these cushions to kind of fold back like they're supposed to. Um, and obviously I have not screwed this into the frame yet, so it's not going to come with the couch. Um, but there is enough clearance and it fits perfectly. Yay. Look at that. So I'm not going to go ahead and upholster this um, until after I paint everything because I obviously don't want to get paint on it. So next episode, I'm going to work on doing some more um, paneling for the wall, some shiplap. So if you're interested in that, I will see y'all for episode eight. Have a great night.